Okay, this is a very simple talk. <laughs> Teaching Qigong to beginners. Yeah, uh, long overdue. Sorry to some of the friends who I have promised since last year. A little bit about my history. I was actually a pharmacist, graduated many years ago, 1987. Uh, 1986, registered uh, at the year of 1987. I started practicing in 1997, just having fun like uh, most people. You practice maybe about half an hour here and then, just to have fun. And uh, I had a bad knee then, so I thought maybe that this would help. Well, the knee recovered substantially. So, 15 minutes here and there, half an hour here and there, three times a week, yes, you still get results. And then I started teaching in 1999 because in early 1999, um, I met a teacher from China. Somehow we clicked <laughs> and uh, he was the one who pushed me to register a company and to start teaching. And I've been leading classes personally since 1999. Sometimes I think of it, I am uh, quite, quite what you call, uh, quite proud of it. I've done this thing for more than 20 years, more than 21 years, in fact. Yeah. And when you started to practice, you don't really, I mean, you don't really put in the effort to practice. You. You don't really feel the greatness, all right? I'm talking about the great right? of Qigong. You will not get crazy. And once you get crazy, you go deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And I become more and more like uh, what they call antisocial. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. We have talks. Uh, you know, you cannot advertise in Malaysia, you cannot advertise your medicine. So you can only throw parties to convince the pharmacists and the doctors that you are selling the best, right? So we have party every now and then, very frequent, something like uh, uh, two to three a month easily. Yeah. Then I stopped showing up in uh, these parties and people somehow they felt it. They, 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 some of them, they called me and then they said, oh, this guy is now, is a hermit now, he's antisocial, funny, so young, and then he, he turned that way, sad story. <laughs> but uh, you see, I have a rule. I don't attend parties and all that on Tuesday and Thursday evening when I take the class. You say whatever you want, I don't. Are there exceptions? Yes. Yeah, only when I really find it necessary, then I don't take the class. Otherwise, I take the class personally. Why? It is very simple because I enjoy taking the class. This is something that up until now, many teachers are not able to understand. I can tell you honestly that many people are not able to understand. It is not the fun alone. It is the greatness inside. It is not the greatness of, hey, look, I am the teacher. Yeah? See, I brought you the sensation. I brought you the experience. No, nothing about that. Nothing about that. Yes, now and then you have uh, um, those who, who have been watching my uh, this uh, Facebook or all that, they'll, they'll probably understand. I don't talk so much about getting people healed. I mean, if you were to do something like me after 20 years, <laughs> you also want to stop doing that, right? Until and unless it is necessary. Yeah, because people get healed. You know, they practice, they get healed. People come and then they get a private session, they get healed. I'm not talking about 100%, but their success rate is very high. Efficacy and what you call effective rate is very high. Uh, I... I always tell them this, uh, up until today, there's not one patient I met in the middle of the street and yell at me, ah, oh, this guy is a hopeless fella. He, he cheated, he said that uh, I, I could get well, but he did something that I did not get well, no. <laughs> okay, so 
why teach and why I am encouraging you to teach. Because I believe you are going to experience the same thing that I have experienced. Something that is very different. One of the main things is when you are teaching and you are able to put yourself down, right? Don't carry yourself as that much as a teacher, right? Just having fun with everybody. You will really feel what is holistic entity? What is holism? You know, um, I mean, years ago, many, many years ago, we already felt that then when I'm hungry, many of them down there do feel hungry. <laughs> because uh, I used to stand on stage when I take the class, and it was many years ago. Now I don't even stand on stage. <laughs> I stand together with them. Yeah, everywhere I go is the same. So when I'm hungry, they feel the hunger. So I got to make sure that I'm not hungry before I take my class. You know, and then if I'm in good form, they are in good form. So I got to make sure that I'm in good form. Yeah, I don't go to parties partly because uh, you had some good, what you call uh, so-called good food, good drinks. The next day, let's say the next day is Tuesday or the next day is Thursday where I'm supposed to take a class. I don't feel good. I was playing uh, squash competitively. Yeah. Uh, after graduation, you don't have the money, then you play for clubs, you know. So uh, you don't have the money to join the clubs, but you play for them. You just don their jersey and then you play for them so you can enter the court. Yeah. Those were the years. Now, then you find that this playing games and all that, they affect. They affect your performance. Performance of what? Not the performance of Qigong, but the performance when you play, when you have fun with Qigong. So I stopped playing squash. So uh, more people say that this guy is, has turned into a hermit. This guy is a dishwasher. Right? But actually, I enjoy myself very much. I have a new bunch of friends, you know? And uh, those who understand me, they, they remain my good friends, my business partners, and you know, they remain good friends after so many years. Yeah. Why teach? Again, you will discover many things. If you were to genuinely just take it as something for fun, take it as something to understand what exactly is behind the field, what is, on, what is behind what we call an entity, right? Holistic entity. You're gonna gain. You're gonna gain tremendously. Now, how to start teaching? Make sure legal aspects are fulfilled. I am not in your country, so you have to find out whether there are any legal aspects uh, where you are supposed to fulfill, right? Over here. Simple. I need to register the company. You know, I have all the documents. I'm actually, I, I have been teaching at the university for five years. I even have the, the certificate from the universities to allow me to teach at the universities. Five years. Uh, I quit last year because I find that um, I somehow found that I'm not doing well teaching those youngsters, you know undergrads. Uh, but I'm glad that my friend is going to take over the class. Yeah. Uh, so number one, make sure legal aspects are fulfilled. Number two, do not push excessively. This is one problem that, uh, you know, when you start to taking class and all this, you have to watch out of uh, injuries at my place, we have a form where they're going to fill in, they're going to tell you that what are the major illnesses. Yeah. Over the years, I can pick up illnesses rather easily. Yeah. I mean, severe illnesses. So, uh, but I, can un I, I understand that not many people are able to do that, particularly when you first started, like me, when I first started, you don't, you, you're not able to tell whether this patient is having that problem or not. So the form helps tremendously particularly hard problem. I have seen people who practice uh, Qigong 
So uh, I was sent to the hospital. And uh, after that, the sister brought him to see me. Okay. And then I said, what did you practice? He said, oh, that evening I signed up for the class. I went in there. And then they started to do this Chinese shrug. So this is Chen Qi, uh, Chinese shrug. Struggling. Uh, this this guy doesn't speak uh, Chinese well. He speaks English well. So he said that this is Chinese struck. Uh, I say, okay, this is called Chen Qi. Now what happened? Then I started to sweat profusely, and then I have difficulty breathing. And then they say that this is good. So continue. Don't worry, the pain will go away. Just continue. Then he said. I was lucky in the sense that I did not lose my logical thinking. So I told my sister, you better take me to a hospital. So I went to the hospital, they said I had an anginal attack. Now I'm not here to, don't take it as I am here to frighten you or anything. Else. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Otherwise I wouldn't have this talk. What I'm saying is that be careful. Be very careful. I can tell you this, one patient or one student down in that class because of an angina attack or heart attack or whatever, more or less you can say that this class is gone. All the good work done by the teachers previously, all gone. gone. All right? So do not push excessively. What do you mean? Sweating profusely is a sign that the heart is losing control. This is the most important thing. Sudden death is all about heart attack, heart failure. I mean, kidney failure, it can last for years. All right, I go for dialysis. The kidney not working for three days is still alive. Liver also is still alive. The lungs fail, they don't fail one, two, three, go. No, they don't. Only the heart. When they fail, they go, pop, one, two, three, go very, very fast, yeah? So do not push excessively. It's always good to know whether they have any underlying illnesses, right? When they're sweating profusely, even like doing chen qi, then there's something strong inside, right? And most likely it is the heart. Uh, this is extreme case. There are also minor cases, like people come in with a uh, rotator cuff problem. And then, oh, no worry. You just keep on doing the push-pull and you'll be fine. <sighs> no, it is, going to be, it is not going to be fine. Why? You said, why are you saying this? At the center, when they were practicing, they had this rotator cuff problem. They have frozen shoulders, but after the practice, they got well. Ah, that's the center. You were talking about a place where 4,000 people were practicing together. How many in your class? 60, 100? And Dr. Pang was there at the center. You know how powerful was the chi field? My, my father went there. I've never been to the center. Eh? Never met Dr. Pang, I've never been to the center. The moment when I wanted to go, door already closed, right? My father took his friends, a uh, whole group of them there. That guy had a frozen shoulder. So they were queuing up at the center there. I mean, signing in, right? Checking in. So, and then wind blows. That old man, he's quite big. So he said, oh. He was carrying back with his left hand. So he normally used his left hand to comb because he can't lift his right hand. So then, oh, left hand carrying something else. Reach for the comb. Then he stopped there. He told my dad, he said, look, my arm is okay. I can go home now. <laughs> I don't have to sign in for any class. I came here because I have this problem. I can go home now. See? If you have that kind of chi field, then it's okay. If you don't, then be careful, right? If there's a problem with the rotator cuff, set up the rotator cuff, right? And then you see the, the progress change rapidly yeah any injuries 
All right. Some of them are still saying that, oh, you have some uh, knee problem? Don't worry, do ball squat. That is the biggest problem. All right. Over, over here in Malaysia, I do not know what about the places uh, where you all were, uh, what are called teaching. If there's a knee problem, that means the meniscus are touching or whatever, all right? The space are getting very uh, narrow. Don't push it. If you snap it, you're going to, <laughs> I don't know what to say, yeah? So play safe. Do not push excessively. I routinely, even now up until now, I mean, I see only uh, what you call, most of the time, they do not come and see me until and unless they do not have a choice. So most of the time I'm seeing patients, that either the, the doctor said that, sorry, there are no more tricks for you. Or, sorry, I think you need a surgery. All right, when it comes to physical problems, 90% of them will come and see me. It's either because they are old customers, they trust me very much, or they are, you know, things like doctor said, ah, sorry, you need a, you need a surgery on your, your shoulder. See? And on this thing, then we work on them. But there are cases that I have to tell them honestly, that, sorry, I'm not good enough to settle this. You got to go back to your a doctor, you've got to go back to your orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. So uh, do not do not push excessively. This is important. Yeah. Uh, this seems to be a question or something. Happening to me, an injury, shoulder cuff, and uh, no getting better and better doing stretching. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Now, starting with something easy. What is the easiest? Easiest is lachi. Huh? Simple lachi, the conventional lachi. But I can tell you honestly, this simple lachi, well, we talk about simple lachi also today later on. Yeah? It is not as effective as it seems. Yeah, always remember you are not go. It is not possible to recreate the history of having four thousand people practicing at the center, of having one great man taking the class. Dr. Pang was taking the class, you know, and then those great healers, Pan Minghuan, Luo Ping, Wu Su Xiang, Ling Song Bai, all these they were the so-called tumors healer. Many of them, they are gone. They are no longer around. See, you don't have this kind of people anymore. So even if you start a class of 4,000 people, can you get Dr. Pang to take the class? See, so this is something that we say that we got to be careful, all right? Now, so is something easy. What is the easiest? Over here, we are trying to recommend you big lachi. We'll talk about it later on, yeah? Pay attention to formation of chip field. Now, this is something that I, I mean, it's good. They have a problem. They come and see you. You teach them this. They go back. Then after two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or one or two months, they come back again. Same problem. And many times, these are minor problems. That I can, I can tell you that the moment they, they go back to the blue sky, problem gone. Yes, many times they have a lot of frustration and all that. They do not understand the importance of getting well, getting acquainted, befriend the blue sky. You know, how much do you know blue sky? How much do you know blue sky? Can you look up to the blue sky until you close your eyes? You experience that the blue sky is looking at you. Try it. When was the last time you looked at a blue sky? I mean, I know practice is one thing. Yeah. I don't look up the f blue sky that frequently. <laughs> but I can tell you this I close my eyes, the blue sky is in there. I want it to be there, it will be there. 
I've spent many, many, what you call uh, days, <laughs> hours into this thing, right? In ancient days, they call it Kong Lan Lai Li. That means the empty blueness is getting inside of me. But I don't explain much about this. Yeah, try this. This is simple. But it is very, very powerful. I shared Lachi with some friends, one of them almost cried, and others said she cried when doing Lachi on her own at home. I guess I should ask them to look at blue sky often. Now, uh, without having a look at, at, at your friend, more or less I can tell that she has tons of emotional problem trapped inside. Whether you ask her to look up to the blue sky or doing this open close, all right? Most likely, Tears are going to come out. Yeah, there's no harm for her to do lachi. All right, are you talking about big lachi or the small one? Ira, are you talking about big lachi or the small one? Yes, the big one is much more effective than the small one. Now. Since you asked, one very important trick, before and after. What happened before and what happened after? Very, 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 very few people pay attention to this. Serious. What happened before and what happened after? Probably only in our class that we talk about this. What happened before and what happened? What happened before you practice and what happened you after you practice with Chi up. This is important. What happened before you practice big large? What happened before after you practice big large? Ask them to pick up the difference. All right? And you can start them slow. I can tell you this. All my clients, those who come in with tons of emotional problem, 10 open close three times a day. Only 10. What? You're crazy. In the class, you ask us to do 45 minutes. Yeah, you're in the class. You're different. You're senior. You are good. <laughs> See? You can give them a lower dose. Even in 10 open close, they can tell it clearly. All right? Now, in your case, Ira, you have gone through level one. You have gone through module one. You have gone through module two. How are you going to help her to settle her emotional issue? Make use of the five elements. You see? Start slowly. It's your friend. Talk to her. Yeah? Okay. So this is one area that I found many teachers are not, uh, what are called, making good use of. It's free of charge. You know, blue sky is free of charge. <laughs> All right? And what is behind blue sky? Magnanimous. When they talk about magnanimous, can you get something like that? No. Yeah, there are many things in the blue sky. Okay. Uh, losing balance is a common problem. How do we settle losing balance? Okay. This is one issue that uh, also I think has been very commonly neglected. Uh, we do it a Chinese style. Huh? Start with a picture on your right. <laughs> okay, the man is standing with the knees bent. Uh, he is not doing three centers measure. Okay. Now, let's say the arms are in front. So let's say he is doing three centers because I can't find a good photograph. Uh, what's wrong with the posture? This is a question, and this is a very common mistake. It is a standing. The feet can be close together, the knees can be straightened. What do you see from the picture? What is the problem? Hello, this is a question, no.
The balance. What's wrong with the balance? <laughs> ah, the head is going back. The vertical line is diagonal. Yes, the chin. And I was told by a good friend <laughs> that many teachers insisted this way, that you should look straight to the front horizontally. You should look straight to the front, but then it shouldn't be horizontally. I mean, all through my career of more than 20 years, I only met two person. I only saw two person. I met one person, okay, who is able to look out horizontally and yet without any problem. Okay, you can only do that when your by way down to your coccyx has already formed a straight line. The one that I met is Do Zhan Guo. The one I've seen is Dr. Pang's photograph many years ago. Yeah. So this is not something that on day one you can do that. In the book, that's, how, that's the reason why I kept stressing on the fact that apply logical thinking. In the book, it says that you should look out, you know, horizontally and all that, which is wrong, very wrong. Not just wrong, very wrong. When you stop the flow here, you stop the flow throughout the whole body. Uh, I have to wait. Uh, I got to. Hang on. Yeah, so this is problem number one. Problem number two. Okay, go to the big lachi. What is the purpose of big lachi? Again, this is a question. What is the purpose of Big Lachi? Open your lungs, calm the mind to relax, open up the whole body. Yes, all correct. Do what is the purpose of having the arms spread out? So that I fake myself as a big bird. Feel open, feel heart open. Enhance the opening and closing, yes. I have found that many of them in the class, they don't understand the mechanism behind. Probably our mistake, I did not explain this clear enough. When you are doing this, and when you are doing this, there is a difference, right? You can practice it on your own can tell, and you will be able to tell the difference. This one, the small one, it is more concentrated on the core. And many times, and many times, it's actually concentrated on the outside. You feel very good on the outside. Not many people are paying attention to these details. What we want you to really experience and feel is inside. All right? Sometimes some of them they argue with me and say, No, no, Mr. Wee, you're wrong. No. Uh, like the other that gentleman I met the other day. No, no, Mr. Wee, I can feel it a lot inside. Okay, I don't want to argue. <sighs> See? But when you do it this way, this one open close is to make exchange with the outside world. This type of exchange is small. This type of exchange is huge. You get what I mean? The moment you do it this way, shoop, you can feel like it's shooting out. You do it this way, you feel it concentrating. There's a difference, right? So when we ask you to do this, you do this. When you ask you to do this, you do this. They are not the same. They are not the same. Now, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. But sometimes your taste bud are not catching up well enough. <laughs> you get what I mean? So you gotta spend some time dig deeper. All right? You do this 10 minutes, and then you do this 10 minutes, you see the difference. 
Yeah. Okay. Now, another point: the large chi. All right. Many are still doing large chi this way. How you should do your large chi? Leading with the elbows. Right? Even when we are talking about a small one. I mean, if you are here, of course, you how to, how to lead with your elbows? <laughs> you can't, right? Logical, but particularly when you are doing small ones. Okay, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. You do it yourself. You lead with the elbows, and then you lead with your hands. You see the difference. One, the cheese outside. One, the cheese inside. It's much clearly inside. Yeah, this one the. The story behind it, very long. I, I think we're not able to go through that one. Very long story, yeah. Is about the the, uh, the martial art. This is from martial art, yeah. So okay, so when you were able to do this, you are going to feel it deeper inside, and when you are able to synchronize with your breath, the effect become bigger. So when you are doing this. When you're doing the open close and doing the breathing, the effect is different. It's deeper, stronger. Yeah? So this is the common mistakes in uh, what you call big large chi on uh, uh, open close. Now let's see further. Uh, this one is an important issue. Look at the top half of the uh, slide, yeah? So we say that uh, you stand with the feet close together. Right, you turn your feet and one to the front. Many people have problem with this. So what do you do? You can do it, the one on the far right, right? You have a feet separated a little bit, and turn this way, you know, and one to the front. When you're standing this way, you will have better balance. Yeah, even lift chi up, right? Don't be so religious. I mean, some people, many of them, they are treating this uh, like a couch practice. No, 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 you cannot do it. It's, uh, I was talking to a friend, I said, do you realize that where do you get this push proof from? Where did you get it? Anyone can tell me where Dr. Pang, this uh, push pull is founded on which practice? This is the signature movement of Zeneng Qigong, right? Yes, everybody knows. I mean, you look into body mind form, you have pushed the mountain, you look into a standing meditation, uh, you have a big horse, then you have this and that. Stand. But you can see all these exercises in many other forms of Qigong. Standing meditation, Sing Yi Chen, they have. Whatever the style that you're talking about, and there are many there, right? Hun Yuan Zhuang, all these, they're, they're standing there. Right, push the mountains. How many from Ermi has one? This neck movement also, yeah. But this one, push pull. This one is actually extracted from soaring crane, also designed created by Dr. Pang. But in soaring crane, you practice with your feet separated. Okay, with the feet separated. Dr. Pang did not say much about the practice of this push pull in in soaring crane time. Soaring crane is is he, he has already given soaring crane to somebody else, so we do not want to talk much about it. But soaring crane, uh, the practice has some problem. The standing meditation had some problem back in the nineteen eighties, and Dr. Pang uh, corrected the, the practice. Yeah, that was back in nineteen eighty five, I think eighty five, yeah, something like that. And he did not change the position of this feet thing, right? And don't, don't. Sometimes some people they get they get over jealously technical into oh if you don't close this you're gonna lose your chi that way. My goodness, where in it, where in the lectures or or, uh, or text that mentions something like that? No. <laughs> See, no. I mean, this one, you're going to get a better wholeness, that's it. But if this client come in, if they're able to have their feet together and they're going to lose their balance, 
they have to consciously managing their movement throughout the practice, this is going to be damaging. How to enjoy? <laughs> when you can't even stand properly, you are, you are swaying here and there, shaking here and there, how are you going to enjoy the practice? See? So, logical thinking again. In Big Lachi, we have one in front, one in the back. Now, Big Lachi, where do you get the Big Lachi? Big Lachi, actually, the movement is from Sing Yi Chuan. All right? But the, the movement is from Sing Yi Chuan. I'm not talking about the requirement behind it. Yeah? It's different. Uh, that, that one is, is people's stuff. We, we copy the movement. That's it. Yeah? So, logical thinking again, getting balance. Yeah. The same thing if they are not able to have one foot in front, one foot in back, you know, they have to have their feet together. You know, you don't understand when the feet together is like this, when the feet are together, like, I mean, separated a little bit, and then they can still be parallel. But if the feet are separated far out, you can't have them parallel. You're gonna let, they're going to tense up the whole body, all right? And then it has to be something like, in the picture. Ling, big La Chi, the movement came from Xing Yu Quan, a martial art. Okay, or Da Cheng Quan. Xing Yu Quan, uh, somehow back in 1960s or something, they branched out. Yeah. Xing Yi Quan. Or Da Cheng Quan. Okay. Oh, this is one aspect. Uh, we can only cover things that we see commonly. Yeah? Now, then sometimes uh, you get the question about people asking that, uh, can you tell me what are the levels within this and that? All six positions of the feet shown on the picture are correct. Yes. Yes. All the positions are correct. Now, the best one is when you can have your feet together and then you separate and then you go this. All right? But if they are going to lose the balance, then don't. You let them have it separated. How far away? It can be one foot apart. It can be half a foot apart. Sometimes half a foot apart is already good enough. Then you go like this. Yeah? And then, uh, uh, if you were to, some of them, they practice with their feet, uh, not one in front, one or one in the back. Particularly, some of them, they have very uh, a big issue with their hip joints. Yeah. Then you have, you ask them to have their feet together, or even they can sit down. They can sit down and practice. Yeah. And then when they are having their feet together, well, like this, this is the best because you get the, the whole thing well connected together. If you put it this way, well, this is, they can balance this way, then it's good. But if they are wider, wider apart and you insist that they have their feet parallel to each other, then that is not scientific because it's going to be very strenuous to the knees, to the, to the lower limbs. Yeah? Okay. Uh, frequent question is that, uh, okay, now, let's say I started with Big Lachi. What do you think about the second thing? No, the second thing can be uh, uh, Tai Chi Ball 1. All right? It can be Tai Chi Ball 1. It can be Lift Chi Up. It's up to you. But I, my personal opinion is that Tai Chi Ball is one exercise that has been very, very much overlooked. Okay, many people like to jump into Tai Chi Ball 2 because it's two balls, two is better than one. <laughs> and then they get injury. <laughs> if you listen to the lecture correctly by Dr. Pang, somewhere when he talk about Tai Chi Ball 2, he said that, I'm not asking you all to teach this one, Tai Chi Ball 2. He said, you got to practice it until you know it well enough, then you go and teach. I don't ask me which lecture, right? I, 
I still have very good memory, but I'm lazy to pick up where exactly uh, that was said. Then my personal experience is that many people, they like this. Yeah? Most of those that I've seen on screen doing this, wrong. Serious. The wholeness is simply not there. Right? Your arms are moving. Your lumbar are not moving. <laughs> you see? Your lower limbs are not moving. See? You only move your upper arms. Sure, you get into a problem. You get into conventional Tai Chi practice problem of moving the upper body, not the lower body. And you get injury. You get hyperpressure. Right? And most common, they get rotator cuff problem. Yes, they get rotator cuff problem. Uh, anyway, uh, we're not here to point fingers. Huh? So going back to Tai Chi Ball 1. There are many things that's hidden in Tai Chi Ball 1. Okay? I, I do not want to talk so much about it. Just briefly telling you uh, certain things. That the meridian system a natural part of our body. Do you realize that in uh, level one, level two, level three of Zhenang Qi Gong, we try to avoid the meridian system. We move Qi perpendicular to the body. Okay, you do this, uh, what you call uh, uh, separate fingers, yeah? The body my form where you separate your fingers and you flex your wrist that way so that you stimulate the negative meridians and all that, right? Uh, you do bad body arch back, you stretch your urinary bladder channel so much. What do you do at the end? You do tapping. What do you do tapping? You send chi across the meridians to disperse the chi. See, we are trying to move chi perpendicular to the body. Level one, two, three, the same thing. But then, when you come to Tai Chi Ball one, you are moving on to orbits. You're moving on to orbits. That's a reason why people feel it very rapidly. This is one thing. You know, the practitioners, they feel it very rapidly. Uh, the first time I pick up the ball to practice Tai Chi Ball, I could, I could feel it completely. Serious. You know? And uh, so this is one, the meridians. Everyone has it. So your, your students are going to feel it quite clearly. See? And by then, this practice was, was pushed into the market right, quite rapidly. Or rather, that uh, the center had, had not, uh, what you call, did not get sufficient time to to test it out. It is not like live chia body my form. How many people practice? Millions. Tested, proven, safe. Taiji ball came out only one year. Center closed. Right? Nobody wants to practice Taiji ball. Everybody likes two balls. Two balls looks much beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You know. Then in Tai Chi Ball, there are certain exercises that are tricky or not very safe, like the head movement. I am a therapeutic massage specialist, okay? So I know what is, what is good, what is bad, right? You know, the head swirl. And then moving the ball up and down in the head exercise. This one is tricky, moving the ball up and down. Turning the head, that one is risky, yeah? Those who have a neck injury, they shouldn't try this. So if you take out that exercise, that is one exercise, right? And then there's one side twist, right? You turn your body sideways and turn the ball, right? And at the end of this side twist, you one push to the back, three pushes to the back, and then and reverse three pushes again. That one is extremely tricky. <laughs> Right? The exercise, exercise itself is safe. Side twist is safe. But that pushback is tricky. You find yourself spending a lot of time trying to teach that one. All right? So when we were teaching at the university, we don't teach that one. Yeah? And then uh, ball rolling. Uh, ball rolling is actually high level 
of martial arts stuff. So when you attack, it is no longer it is not low, no longer that you are going out with a punch or anything else. All right, they are going out with a whole body. So the arm, the arms, the hands, they are taking the whole body. This is the one that is taking the whole body. So this ball rolling is tricky, <laughs> tricky. And if you are not able to have your lumbar loosen, you're not gonna get a good result. So one, two, three, these three exercises, the first one, the next one, uh, turning the head one, you can take it out. And then side twist, the pushback is confusing. You can take it out. And then bow rolling, streaky and demanding. You can take it out. The rest, ah, uh, they are fun. <laughs> they are fun. They are easy and they are good. Yeah. The problem, the problem with the practice is that you need a ball. <laughs> you need a ball. <laughs> That's a problem. You can't. Uh, many people find that it's not easy to to travel with the ball. Yeah, that's the only problem. You need a ball. And some people, they are very meticulous with their hands. They are very particular. They don't want to touch the ball. Uh, then <laughs> that will be a little bit difficult. Yeah, I hope that you take a look at Tai Chi ball. Yeah, and I'm quite sure those of you who have been practicing regularly, even three, these three sentiments, half, half an hour daily, you would be able to pick it up on day one. You will pick up the effect on day one. You feel it day one. Uh, a few words about the uh, the depth of practice, right? Some people say that can I just do this big lunch here alone? What do you think? The depth of this big lachi is about what? This external union, right? It's making exchange with the outside world. The depth of it is not as strong as lift chi up. That I'm very sure, right? Because the involvement of the gates, we call it gates, huh? shoulder, elbows, are not there, are not that much in uh, this uh, big lachi, okay? But this big lap chi is a much, much more efficient than small lap chi, the conventional one that where you leading with, you lead with your hands. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are talking about teaching beginners. You want to teach three centers much, you know well enough. Yeah, three centers much. I think all of you know uh, well enough. It can introduce you slowly, but uh, if you let them have fun first, all right feel a lot of this first before you introduce them something challenging they are going to love you more <laughs> and they're going to love the practice more yeah now this tesla scalar generator this is one device i i have been uh, I was sworn about devices since many years ago. So many devices in the market, I have some basic knowledge in them. Yeah, I mean, partly because I'm a, a pharmacist. Now, this device is something, it's invented by uh, Nikolai Tesla, yeah? True genius. This one is a really, really powerful genius. Now, so, when two identical waves meet, they are going to cancel off each other. Theoretically, you don't have any wave, right? So this is something like what we call a noise cancellation, uh, noise cancellation uh, uh, headphone. Yeah, you plug in, then you don't hear outside noises because they send out something else that is just identical to it, but opposite. The wave pattern is opposite. You have one wave pattern like this. You have one pat wave pattern like this. When they meet, they cancel off each other, right? But Nikolai Tesla said, no, you still get something out of it, all right? Then the scalar wave, 
the scalar wave is something that is very powerful. I'm not going to go through the technical aspect. I can send you all the the website, the link to the website, and all that where you can read. Now, uh, I was very glad that uh, last year, somewhere around June or something else, uh, Irma in Holland introduced me something, some device similar to this one. I saw it immediately. I told her, that "You get me one unit. <laughs> I'll pick it up when I'm there." <laughs> Okay, it was 900, uh, 990 euros, or 1,000 euros, I cannot remember. Okay. I went there and uh, brought one, and uh, brought one home. My son is an engineer, right? Multimedia engineer means they look into this uh, designing uh, amplifiers, all these things. So he looked at it and he said that he can make something much better than this one. So he designed and maybe got something like this now. And uh, I've sent some units to Irma. She was very pleasantly surprised that this one is much powerful than the previous one. Okay. Okay, cut the story short. Huh? What it does is that it pulls you into the middle. The device is going to pull you into the middle. What is the middle? Those who have done more than two, they will understand that is before the eruptions of emotions. That is the middle state. The device is able to pull you into that state. What do you do when you practice Qigong? You try to go deep into that meditative state. What is the ultimate meditative state? That is that state at the middle. The device is able to pull you to the middle, right? And uh, it is extremely useful for leading a class. Yeah. Uh, but what is the problem with the device? The problem with the device, number one, is the cost. <laughs> I've sent one to your friends in Italy. She, she switched it on. And then the boyfriend, who is not practicing much, Got a shock. I said, oh, what is this? Wow, this is good. <laughs> Immediately, she said, I want this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've sent it to a friend in uh, New York. She's very sensitive. She bought one and bought two. Eventually, she bought four. Yeah. Um, this is a costly device. We are trying our best to, to bring down the prices. Now, is retailing at 490 to all those who, uh, I mean, all our participants, 490 euros. You just need to have the device next to you. Uh, when I've tried many things, I mean, I, I can afford to try many things <laughs> when I have five or six units at home, right? So I found that when taking the class, it is very easy. The device. That this device they have it has a reach of 15 to 20 meters 15 to 20 meters but you don't have to do it that way let's say like the hole is 30 meters then I I need two one here one at the end no just one next to me that's good enough somehow I'm gonna tap onto the information I'm gonna tap onto the wave and then I'm going to, to send it to all in the class that's how useful it is. Uh, we make, we designed it in such a way, my son designed it in such a way, the antennas can be removed, yeah, for shipping, for mobility and all that, yeah. Uh, we are retailing it at 490 euros uh, to all those who are attending our courses. Outsiders is 890 USD. Uh, if you are interested, you let me know. Okay, um, this is this unit is mobile. You can use a. It can be powered by a, a power bank. You know the power bank for your handphone. You can carry anywhere, and power bank can can last for more than twenty hours. Oh yes, pulls you to the middle. That means 
whether you like it or not, at birth, at birth, we were in the middle. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> And as we grow up and all that, we we learn many things, and then uh, we get into that way of uh, not able to stay in the middle. We are no longer at the middle, right? Uh, how big is the device? This big or this small, right? This is removable. I can remove this easily. Yeah, so when we ship, we, sh we can ship it that way and you can carry it anywhere. The problem with this thing is that uh, because of, we actually had the, the units done uh, beginning of the year or somewhere around February, but then because of the COVID-19, we cannot ship anywhere until lately. Yeah, how much it is 490? euros per unit we take care of the shipping yeah uh, it is something very interesting serious uh, I'm exploring the together with some friends the application on of this into many other things yeah uh, including information therapy but uh, we have to be very careful about this <laughs> yeah Cannot say anything that is not uh, supported, not well documented. Yeah. Yes, you can be a reseller also. We give you a, a, a good discount as a reseller. Like, like uh, Iroma is our reseller. Amanda is also our reseller. Yeah. Um, I can tell you this more or less. I have never seen anyone who did not find it useful. I've never seen anyone who did not find it useful. Even my son, who is not sensitive, <laughs> he could feel the effect. <laughs> he designed it because I asked him to design it. He went through all the papers and also he designed something slightly different than, than what we have seen, uh, what we have bought from uh, Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, Okay, any question that you have about a practice? This uh, Tai Chi ball thing actually is rather, I, I, am, I, I am actually quite confused or, or quite lost why Tai Chi ball did not catch up. Then I was in Germany, I was, I was teaching this, and I found that why? <laughs> One of the reasons is because you need a ball. <laughs> Those who said he found that, that the mind is clearer. Now, there's one thing for those who are emotional, people who are emotional, you have to expose them or you have to ask them to expose themselves to the device. Great, they're going to get an emotional reaction. I've seen um, at least two or three cases. They are going to get into emotional reactions. We have, uh, we have a case of a, a child, but this is only one case, so I'm not going to, I, I can't say much about this. Um, we exposed the child gradually, right? And then uh, positive results were seen, despite the fact that the child was already on information therapy. Yeah. Okay, but when you are taking them into what you call practice, dynamic practice, let's say you practice a lift chair, switch on the device, or do big latch, you switch on the big device, they only feel the goodness. They don't have any problem like uh, this uh, emotional reaction or whatever, no. They only feel that the chi field is better, more refined. Oh yes, I'm recording this session. Any questions? You no know question, then we have to say goodbye. If you have any question, you can always email me. 
right? I maintain that, uh, well, number one, I'm not a Qigong emperor. <laughs> I, I hope that, I hope that uh, more of you can have fun with uh, Qigong practice. Yeah, uh, and uh, teaching is one of the ways to have fun with Qigong practice. Okay, uh, if you want to know more about this uh, Tai Chi ball, is, that is easy. You want to talk about Tai Chi ball, it is, uh, it is something like, um, I have a book that is available on, uh, on my website. You write to me, I send you the, the link, right? If you want to attend the upgrading courses of Tai Chi ball and all that, uh, you can contact Iruma or Basie. Okay, thank you all. Bye bye. Any problem? I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, um, I've been teaching for about um, three years now, and I find that when I have older people start to practice Chin and Chikun, I mean, like eighty years old they feel really tired. Is that because they relax so much or how, how can I help them? Okay, number one, what do you ask them to practice? Um, just uh, chi field uh, and um, lachi, that's all. And what they, kind of lachi? Um, uh, just simple lachi, I didn't know the big lachi. Okay, now there's one very uh, common issue about la chi is that when you are doing la chi, you are actually working on the chi surrounding you. You will realize that when you ask all the people to do la chi, they tend to do it this way. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Why? Because they can't feel chi, they are weak. The chi surrounding them is very, very little. You, you get me? Okay. So you don't get a very good result in doing this. If they can, if they can, if you ask them to do this synchronized with breath, they will get a better result. Why? Because when they synchronize with the breath, when they synchronize with the breath, there's a stronger exchange. This one. It is number one more on our side, and because they can't feel it, so they're just doing this way, right? Okay. And yeah. uh, sometimes I ask them to do plenty of abdominal massage. Okay, yeah, that, that, that I was yeah. thinking about that too. Okay, 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 thank you so much. Any more question? And about uh, Tai Chi Bowl, are you gonna? Are you planning to teach to give any course in Tai Chi Bowl? Uh, I think Iruma and Basi they they, they 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 may intend to have a class on that, right? Uh, it's very simple. Yes. <laughs> I I have too many things on my plate for now. I have to uh, complete what I want to do within this year, and <laughs> already behind time. <laughs> Those who of you who have been practicing regularly, you can, I'll send you the, the website on this uh, Tajipo, you take a look at that, right? And then I'm, I'm quite sure you feel it immediately. Then if you are looking into the upgrading class of this or whatever, then you can contact uh, Irma or PC. Okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tajipo also is useful, is, I mean, if they are still able to turn the ball, old people, if they're still able to turn the ball, they're gonna find that this is useful. Uh, another thing about Tai Chi ball that is not revealed is this is actually reflectology. <laughs> Working at a ball, this, this makes the difference between a human and an animal. You have plenty of information here, human information. Okay. Uh, okay. Bye bye for now. Uh, I'll send you. I don't. I. I'm not.
too familiar to write on the chat here. I can't remember my own website's name. <laughs> okay. Ah, and though has a, a book and a DVD also. Yeah. Um, in the uh, what you call in the DVD and all that we said, you try to turn the ball with the palm. Yeah, you turn it with your palms. Um, but for old people, as long as the palm is attached onto the ball, they use their finger. It still works. It works well. All right. And particularly when you are taking them. Those of you who are sensitive, I, I mean, you don't even have to be sensitive. Those of you who have sufficient internal chi and all that, you will understand. Those of you who have been to what you call a reflexology, you know it. And they are working on your feet, you feel it. Right? When you're working on the palms, you feel it. So when you are rubbing your palms onto a ball, you're going to feel it throughout the whole body. You see? I am I'm not sure why there's so many things of in, in uh, the lectures and all that, probably because of uh, time constraint. Like I said, this, this practice came out less than six months later. The center has to close. Yeah. And uh, at back in early year to the early 2000s, people were practitioners of Zen and Qigong were actually peating, peating this uh, conventional level one, two, three with uh, tangible one and SLS. Only in recent years that this thing is uh, not not so common. Those days, some teachers, they would say, ah, no, nah, nah, that is not the real one. This one is because of uh, the center has to be closed and uh, Dr. Pang need to do something related to Tai Chi so that the center can go on, and uh, which is nonsense. All right. Taste of the pudding is in the eating. Try it. Antonius, thank you. Yeah, that's the website. I'll, I'll send an email to you all. Okay. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you.